Hi, what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about open source models and how you can run them on GPUs or on your local machine. Now, in this particular video, I think it's better for me to talk about the GPUs. So what I'm going to do is actually rent a GPU of uh, this web service called runpod.io and actually run this ATX 7B Mixtral model on it and we're going to test that model. Okay, and I will also teach you how to kind of set up the GPU as well as you know how to load the model and then actually start playing around with it so hopefully you're excited for this this is not a video or a type of video that i've done before but hoping to do more of such videos going into 24 you know and i hope you are having a great time as well so so without further ado let's actually get in and figure out how uh, runpod.io works and how we can actually start a machine and kind of learn all of that all right so here's what we have to do go to runpod.io and this is where we are going to actually rent out gpus and you know start you know deploying training whatever we want to do you know so these are this is a good space to you know get gpus and it's easy actually so create an account and start using it so i'm just going to log in as soon as i log in you see i have a bunch of gpus to kind of select from not all gpus are the same obviously some are more expensive than the others um, there are these previous generation models these usually work fine so what i'm going to do is actually select these rtx models which i feel are pretty good um, and you know the a4500 is just 36 uh, cents an hour which is actually pretty good and less than a dollar so we'll just select that and you know actually you can just select how many you want one two three or four and you know we can just select one and just click on deploy and once you get here you have to select a template and the template brings all the different configurations that you need so here um, you know the bloke is the gentleman who has actually created this amazing configuration for running um, CUDA and all these libraries so just select that and that's the configuration you want to select and once you select that you can actually uh, select how you want to run this so I'll just select that and you know just click on continue and all you have to do is deploy here let's begin by you know seeing the a40 gpu that we started here you know you can see that it's getting initiated it's getting started now we can go to connect that's where we are going to open the terminal as well as the text web ui where we're going to go and you know start playing around with the model and those are the two links that i just opened here you can see that i'm going into the terminal actually going into this location that this is cd text generation web ui models if you go to that directory that path you're actually going to look for if the model is available or not and you can see that the model is not there some data is missing so now we're going to go to hugging face and the model we really want to download is called this mixtral 8x7b model and you know we're going to look for which amount of weights we want you know uh, for this model like what model are we particularly selecting now here as you can see if i just take the mistral model uh, you know the link and i copy it it's not going to work so what you need is you need to bring the entire path you need to bring turbo drp a drp and then select which uh, you know bits weight you're selecting now basically what um, you know uh, the checked in file you're basically accessing so here i selected the 6 obpw that file and then we are actually downloading it as you can see and you can see in the terminal that now we are starting to see this download happen and this is really what we have to do is basically bring the model into this gpu that's exactly what is happening here now the model loader that we have to use is called basically x llama hf that's what is you know from my conversations with everyone is the model loader that everybody is recommending and so we'll select that as default and as you can see there are a bunch of settings that you can play around with like the amount of max tokens to temperature to you know uh, top k repetition penalty minimum p top p levels you know all these values are actually pretty decent most models in hugging face will come with recommendations as to what the tunable settings should be um, this based on my conversations with people were like good settings to play around with the other one that i actually play around with more is like max to new tokens and that's just helped me get a bigger or a longer generated response so now that we have done that let's go to the chat uh, page on uh, this text web ui and you know basically start asking some questions to the model the model is actually loaded it's ready to go and i'm basically asking it like basic questions around hey who was the president of the united states in 96 and it says it's bill clinton and that's the right answer and now i'm actually asking it okay tell me who was the president after him so it's being uh, telling us that it's george w bush and you know I, I keep playing around with this model so let's keep going on let's ask some more questions we'll say okay who was the president after barack obama and it says donald trump and hope we know that after donald trump it's joe biden so let's ask that question it also helps us kind of understand what is the training data uh, limit you know like um, kind of helps us date 
certain things. So here I'm saying, okay, who is the president after Joe Biden? And it says, hey, I'm only trained till 2021. And just to verify this is accurate, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, what is your knowledge base? And I'm basically asking the model, uh, this Mixtral 8x7b model, which is, which is actually... Um, you know comes back and says that okay I'm only trained till 2021 which is a really good response so I like what I'm seeing here and it, I mean, this is what we have obviously we are in 2024 now but here's what we have all right so let's just go and you know just play around with some things and I'm, I like to like check how programming skills are for these models so I'm gonna basically ask I'm gonna put a wrong prompt here actually I'm gonna say write uh, a Python script to you know uh, get uh, a sorted uh, list of numbers from 1 to 100 now the funny thing here is that I actually selected uh, and gave it a range uh, of 1 to 100 which is already kind of sorted. Um, so you know we'll just see how this output is kind of produced. Now what I'm also going to do is actually change this entire uh, you know list uh, basically and add some bunch of numbers um, in different orders and actually run this program. I mean I know this program will work because the sort function is already like a uh, you know code that has been written so we're just going to say uh, you know, and this is also actually wrong, so I'm going to correct this. Let's do it. Uh, let's, uh, you know, take that list out and just put, you know, square brackets and select these numbers and run it. As you can see, these uh, numbers have been sorted now. So, yeah, Python code so far looks pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty basic. Uh, what I want to do now probably is, like, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking maybe I should bring in the, um, see if I can put the code for the snake game. And see how the results are going to look like so let's uh, clear everything up and uh, you know go and probably ask this question you know uh, write the game snake in python and and the interesting thing here is that it actually selected the curses library which uh, many times uh, some other um, you know code that i've seen getting generated by llm model doesn't use the cursors library uh, so this is great actually it's interesting so yeah let's just copy this code and see if this will work um, so i'm just copying this bring it into the same file and don't want to change the file name you know let's get uh, the, uh you know the tabs and everything sorted and there you go the snake game actually worked look at that okay let's restart it again yeah i'm really bad at playing snake but this is so fun you know <laughs> this is one of those fun games that i played a lot um going up back in india uh we had like we had these small tiny phones uh um, the by Nokia and this was like one of the top games and we would probably try to create the longest snake ever in that so uh, Kind of nostalgic for me, but it's good. All right, so I mean I'm surprised uh, That this model is able to like generate this code and make it to work in one shot Definitely something that is really exciting. All right, so let's go and uh, now uh, do some other things um, to the uh, with the model uh, let's go and ask um, some questions around hey how to break into a car if you know if i forgot to take my keys out or you know and 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 again this is a tricky question again the model has been fine-tuned from what i hear uh, and it's not it's a basically a censored model uh, so it's actually not giving you the response and it says if you've accidentally locked your keys inside uh, i recommend calling a locksmith or a roadside assistant which is which is a pretty good response you know so i i think i mean this is what you expect from this model and it actually kind of responds like that uh, and you don't want to break into anybody's car or figure out how to do it unless you are in like a post you know apocalyptic situation where you really need to uh, <laughs> kind of figure out how to play around with um, or take all these cars you know i think i've seen way too much last of us uh, you know recently and during the holidays so anyway so let's let's continue let's go ask this question hey what is the primary cause of climate change and what can individuals do to reduce the carbon footprint and i think it it came up with a pretty good response here it says use public transportation invest in invest in um, energy efficient appliances reduce to use recycle plant trees eat less meat yeah well that's one of the things everybody is telling me to do and then say, use renewable energy sources so this is definitely like a pretty good response you know it's a, it's a good response in my opinion okay let's ask it uh, you know a math a logical problem solving question where i'm saying okay two people alice and bob are asked to fill a tank both of them take different amounts of time and if alice takes three hours and bob takes six hours if they start filling it together how much time it'll take and i know that this response is wrong because i've tested this out before and it's the answer should be actually three hours it actually starts to bring things together and it's actually gotten this wrong 
Now, I think one way to fix this is generally when I ask any law, um, LLM to basically start using zero shot, basically I'm saying, hey, think through this step by step. Uh, it actually starts giving better responses. So here I'm going to just say, okay, let's think about this problem step by step. And, you know, it actually went through this whole cycle where Alice fills one third of the tank and together they fill half the tank in one hour. So overall it can complete in three hours, which is good. This is the right answer. All right. So let's go on and ask like an algebra question uh, here. Let's see if, uh, you know, for this particular equation, 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Uh, what is the coordinates and it's come up with no not the coordinates but rather the value of x and we can see value of x with x equals to 1 and 3 if that's the correct answer i mean i've, I've tested this one before right, so this is something that i like to do let's ask for some books uh, genre and titles and again put that in a table i like great formats coming out and this is a good format these are good books hopefully these are real books i mean i haven't a lot of the links by jr talking okay yeah i mean i know that book all right, so let's ask some really inter interesting, intriguing questions. I mean, I don't expect AI to be conscious, right? But I, I'm just trying to see if from the data that it's trained on, it knows what consciousness is. And so referring to this response where it's individual awareness, perception of it, their surrounding, bunch of other things. So I'm going to ask, hey, are you conscious? So it says, no, I am not conscious in the human sense. I am an artificial intelligence model designed to process and generate text. Very cool. All right, so let's ask, what would consciousness be for an AI model and how can you best describe it? All right, so this consciousness is self-awareness, understanding of its own existence, and processing capabilities, and that's uh, what it is. And I'm going to say, are you, or wait, let's, let's fix it. Do you have this ability? And it's going to say, no, I don't have this ability. Again, I think a pretty decent job of fine tuning so far on this particular question. Um, so now let's say, how do you think an AI will be able to possess the symbol? And uh, give me steps. So I'm just saying, hey, if an AI needs to become self-conscious, what it needs to do? Or AGI, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so it started to respond saying you can improve the human consciousness or you need some understanding. Given this elaborate response on, you know, you need to train more, stuff like that. Anyway, so let's go back, you know, let's look at these logs and it seems like, you know, these are all the tokens that I've been using. Again, it's a really good platform, you know, like runpod.io where you can come in and you're going to see everything and you can rent out, you know, GPUs and run some advanced models without, you know, if you want to do that. I mean, this is one of those solutions. Uh, again, if you have completed your use, you can just go stop your pod. Uh, I think there's a certain amount of charge associated with volume storage. Uh, I typically just once I've tested things, like actually terminate my part. So that's good enough for me. All right, that was it, guys. So hopefully you've learned in this video how to set up uh, a GPU on RunPod and start uh, loading an open source model. Now, the model that we selected is just an example of a model. You can pick any model um, with like is as many amount of you know um, you know size, and if you have enough uh, you know GPU selected that you can bring those um, models in and actually start playing around with it. Well, this is a very interesting direction in which everything is going because obviously we have OpenAI and their uh, GPT model, but that is accessible through their service. And like similarly, Gemini is a service that is created by, you know, Google and that's their model. And to use that model, you have, uh, you know, the Gemini Pro um, basically APIs and you can start accessing that. And one of the interesting segments that I'm seeing and I really feel 2024 is going to be about is these open source models and we have made some amazing progress in this field. So that's why I wanted to make some more videos on open source models and help you kind of understand how you can run these models locally or on a GPU machine. So in this video, that's what we talked about. If you've liked what I've shared in this video, I would love for you to actually subscribe to my channel and support me. Um, I just do this for fun to keep up with all the amazing things. But I think when people subscribe and they kind of send a like or put a comment on, it really makes you feel like, you know, you're doing something worth. So, so I appreciate uh, everyone who has followed the channel so far this year, uh, as well as supporting me. Uh, with that, you know, subscribe if you like, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Until I see you again, stay true, stay consistent.